Hello again, folks, and welcome to Graco Live. My name is Tom Malik, Tech Informational Specialist here at Graco. With me again this week, we have Derek Gree, our uh, technical trainer. Derek, how's it going today? Good. Thanks for having me on again. Perfect. So what brings us into the, this lab today looking at this machine? What do we got here? Today? We have the Z60. It's a new, uh, new machine to our lineup of the Z-Series uh, electric sprayers that we have. It's a non-hazardous location sprayer. Mm -hmm. Got it. So Z60, does that mean it's a 6,000 PSI sprayer, or what exactly is it? Yeah, it is a 6,000 PSI, but the thing to remember, it's 6,000 PSI static. So mm -hmm. what that means is statically it can get to 6,000 PSI, but then when we start to spray, it's going to drop down to that 5,000 PSI range when we spray dynamically. Gotcha. So why do we need that higher pressure with the design for this type of sprayer? Is there a specific uh, thought process that we were using? For yeah, that? so before we have a Z45, mm -hmm. now we have a Z60, and some of those materials are higher viscosities. We want to make sure that we offer a product that can spray pretty much anything under the sun when it comes to a high viscosity uh, epoxy or whatever material you have. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Well, perfect. So, you know, I'm looking at it here. Since it's an electrical driver now, is what type of power requirements are we talking about for something of this? You know, is it any special, like, you know, does it need like 50 hertz or does it need like a special, you know, 480 voltage or what does it run on? So it runs off a 230 volt or two, uh, excuse me, 240 volt. Uh, 16 amp outlet. Now it can run to 230 volt or lower. There's kind of a range in there, but the lower voltage that you're using, you're going to get less performance out of it. So if you really want to get to that 5,000 psi performance, make sure you have a good 240 volt, uh, 60 hertz, 15 amp power supply. Perfect. All right. Got it. So it looks like uh, you know it's a pretty standard sprayer kit look on here. You know I'm comparing it. It's got some uh, you know extreme style lower. You know everything else is same style Graco heavy duty cart. But there's a couple of differences I'm seeing. What is this giant thing bolted onto the front? Because typically I notice that we've got our prime valve or our pressure relief valves on the side, but it's bolted into this. What is that? So what that is is a check valve. That check valve is going to prevent any type of flow reversing back into that lower. Uh, because we're driving it electrically, of course, when you guys are out in the field, you're used to every once in a while you cavitate the mm -hmm. pump, you run out of material, you're all about to run out of the material. So what's happening is that all that fluid get pushed into the hose and now it wants to come back because there's a void there. It's yep. trying to fill that void. Mm -hmm. And when you're using electric, if that were to happen, you're turning that motor into a generator and you're going to cause a voltage spike to damage your controls. Mm -hmm. So by having that uh, check valve in there prevents that from happening. Gotcha. Now, I notice is obviously since this is an electrical driven unit, there's no air regulator to control pressure, but how do you control pressure on this machine? So you control pressure, we have a little dial indicator, this knob right over here. Oh, okay, um, so I see this knob here. Yeah, so you got a 1 to 10. So on the Z60, you know, 1 is roughly 500 PSI, 2 is roughly 1,000. So it goes up in about 500 PSI increments until you reach 10, which is roughly that 5,000. Gotcha. So that's a pretty good static pressure knob setting. Yep. Pretty easy to remember, you know, 500 PSI per knob setting. So that looks pretty good. Now, the, the other thing I yeah. want to add to this, this knob, is when you change it, you can actually lock it into place so that way oh. it's not just going to keep spinning on you. It mm -hmm. cuts down on the people that like to come up and turn dials and push buttons. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I understand that. I've seen that all the time, you know, somebody mm -hmm. walk by. So that's good that it's got a locking thing. Now, there's something else I recognized over here, and I'm assuming that's what this is. This is kind of like an error code list down here. Yep. Now, what type of errors, you know, why would you need an error code list? Is there like a light or something that will flash? or tell Yeah, you so there's on? a little LED over the side here, right, right, right there. Okay, yep, right that's there. the LED. So when you turn it on, it's going to light up red. Give it a couple, couple of seconds just to kind of turn on. And then as you're running, it'll stay red. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a feature that's on standby mode. A lot of times, you know, you're spraying and you set the gun down. You got to move something around. After a while, it'll go into standby mode. Mm -hmm. When it's in standby mode, it's going to sit there and slowly come bright and dark, letting you know it's in standby mode. Then you just, you know, give it a quick trigger. It sees that change, and it you got full power again. And of course, you can be diving. It does turn itself off. Yeah. It dives. It dives excessively. So when you run out of paint. It saves your driver and saves your uh, pump, so you're not just uh, running without material mm -hmm. and uh, you know causing damage to your packings. Gotcha. Now there was one other thing I saw in the setup here that we got here. Now it came with this extra little knob here. What exactly is this? Well, it's, it's not necessarily a knob. It's yeah. a it's a filler breather. So when we ship these drivers out, we have oil in here. It's a special gearbox lube uh, specifically for these drivers. And you need to take this red plug out. Yeah, I see it right there. Yep. See yeah, the see the red plug, plug there. Yeah. So you take this red plug out and you're going to replace it with that breather. So then that way as things heat up and cool down it can suck in air and you know breathe like it's supposed to. Got it. That makes plenty of sense there. 
Uh, so the last thing, you know, I mean, otherwise it looks like it'd be pretty approachable. If somebody's used to spraying with, you know, one of our older extreme units or our King Airless sprayers currently. I mean, I'm seeing it's got, uh, you know, standard three post tie rod. It's got an extreme lower. Mm -hmm. It comes with, you know, high pressure Graco, extreme duty hose, XTR7 guns. You know, but is there anything special about the pump lower itself? Does it need a special packing kit or is nope, it just same all? packing kits as your normal extreme lowers. You know, we have the, those three available, extreme and leather, uh, UHMWPE and uh, PTFE yep. and then of course a straight PTFE but typically when running like a one component mm -hmm. sprayer like this it's usually the extreme uh, the UHM WPE and the leather packings. Perfect. Well yeah no that looks like it's really easy for somebody to get in especially if you don't want to you know have to get a tow behind compressor if you were running you know a yeah. regular King Airless sprayer you know this is just you know, plug it into the yeah. wall and away you go. It looks yeah. like it'd be a great sprayer for people you know. It, it is. It's, it's so much more efficient you know you're, you're gonna get about 80 percent savings energy wise mm -hmm. because we're not compressing that air and then decompressing it it's straight from electrical power to moving that pump. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming out with us today and talking about the sprayer. Mm -hmm. And I'll thank you again, folks, for joining us. Please remember to subscribe to our channel so you can get updates on any other videos that are coming our way. Uh, if you have any sort of comments, questions, or thoughts of other products that you want us to talk about, please leave a comment.